Hi everyone, Krista here to do the weekly reading for the sign of Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, and Rising. If you don't know what your Moon and Rising is, Sagittarius, check a link in the description box to alwaysastrology.com. That way you can learn your entire birth chart. And there, if you want more information, you can look up your Moon and Rising sign readings for the week in addition to your Sun sign reading. This is for the week of June 27th to July 4th. And I'll be using the Wisdom of the Oracle deck for the main reading today and then drawing cards from each of the Medicine card tarot and the Healing with the Angels tarot here. This is a general reading, so whatever is most prominent in your life, I encourage you to imply these messages too, and I hope that you find them helpful and healing. I've been asking the question, what are general messages for your sign now for a couple of months since I began this, but... I'm going to switch up the question a little bit this week, Sagittarius, and I will be asking, what does Sagittarius need to know this week? I find that it has a little bit of a different outcome here. It doesn't create, at least from my perspective, a sense of what you can expect. Uh, if you're going the way you're going, instead, it will relay what you may not see or be aware of that you need to be knowledgeable about in order to move ahead to your highest good. So that's why I'm switching up the question a little bit and I hope that you find that helpful. So Sagittarius, I wish for you all success, joy, and wellness. I call upon Archangels Michael, Gabriel, Metatron, and Uriel to guide this reading in peace, clarity, protection, and wisdom. And I ask that Gaia please bless this reading for Sagittarius. What does Sagittarius need to know this week? So links to the cards I'm using today as well as to um, a link to my ebook are in the uh, description box as well, Sagittarius, and a little write-up about why I do what I do. And in July, I look forward to introducing uh, not only my website, but sort of face-to-face -face videos where I can talk a little bit more about um, subjects that I talk about in the book, in addition to tarot and other philosophies and beliefs and ideas and stuff like that. So I hope that you stay tuned for those types of videos. So Sagittarius, so far we have two cards laid. We're just looking for one more jumper and then I'll pull from the bottom of the deck as always for general energy for the week. So thus far in the center, you have the card blessed. If I'm not mistaken, this card shows up in your spread weekly <laughs> or bi-weekly. So not a huge surprise here. Um, perhaps if you're feeling at all that you aren't blessed or that you've been taking something or someone for granted, I think the message here in terms of what do you need to know, Sagittarius, is remain grateful, remain humble around these very prosperous or, or blessed or graceful situations in your life. Um, I've often accused Sagittarius of having a horseshoe up their butt, so no offense. I, I mean that in the most loving way. I just mean that you're probably... Uh, one of the more lucky signs, and I've said before in the past with regard to your home planet being Jupiter, it is the sign of expansion, luck, and optimism, and the armchair philosopher. So you can afford to look at things from a distance, Sagittarius, and of course you have your ongoing levity um, in terms of being able to joke and find the humor in things. Um, there may be an element of difficulty this week in terms of what you need to know. Um, you may be feeling orphaned or that you may be orphaning something or someone. Um, if you're not feeling this or if, you're, if you've been tiptoeing around this, perhaps the message this week is this is actually necessary in order for you to move ahead. Uh, so next to blessed we have orphaned and then the card flexible. So I'm going to talk about these in detail in just a moment. Um, just looking at general imagery and colors here and the tone by which these sit together. And it's looking though you may have been or you may be in the habit of um, tiptoeing around or walking a tightrope around, um, even if you do it with levity. 
somehow maneuvering around a situation that you recognize very deeply probably, and no one's really had to point this out to you, um, that does need to be let go of. So let's look at general energy for the week before getting in depth here one by one. The general energy card has come to the edge. This is actually one of my most favorite cards of the deck. I say that for probably every fifth card, but this, this deck is pretty phenomenal. Um, but the energy in this card is really fantastic. It really speaks to this overall energy of big change needing to be made here. It doesn't mean that a, a big, um, colorful event needs to happen around it. It, it can be kind of it can be kind of quiet, it can be even internal if this is not about another person or persons or group or work situation or even an ideology. This could be strictly you within yourself, about yourself, by yourself. And I say this because in each of the cards, there's only one individual being shown. Um, there's not even other animals here. There aren't really other markers or identifiers that there's another player here. Um, so I think this is something that's really strictly unique to you and it might be the first time in a long time that you may be feeling this. So Sagittarius come to the edge basically means, and this is done with love, the only um, marker here outside of the levitating rock and the dancing, I used to think she was an angel, but I think she's a woman. Um, as in a human here. So she's dancing on the edge, but there are hearts everywhere. So I mean, you're going to feel surrounded by love. You're going to feel as though you are in a safe place, that you have the room to move. This is a beautiful place to be, in fact, because you can do this with your eyes open and take a risk. There is such a thing as a calculated risk, right? Uh, and that's always the best one to take. But sitting still on something, because you don't know what is that the end of it or you don't want to risk this jump if you make a calculated decision at, at what lay at the end of that decision i think you'll be pleasantly surprised that you'll still be surrounded by um, feelings of inclusion and respect but you might feel a little bit even more love and respect for yourself perhaps that's what you feel missing in your life and i think you have a lot to offer other people too other people may be watching how you're about to move and maneuver here with regard to this issue or concern. Ultimately, it's about risk, but calculated risk. In the central position, we have the blessed card. And like I said, this is the pink and the mauve automatically remind me of, a, of an ascension color. I think if you ever forget that you're blessed or that you ought to feel grateful in times of stress, that this is going to help remind you in terms of what do you need to know. Start from this place. If you come from this place, I think everything else is going to sort of situate itself rather nicely for you, um, particularly if it's a calculated decision here and it's done out of love. Uh, another uh, example here with regard to another zodiac sign could be a Capricorn. You could be up against or working with a Capricorn or you could be learning from or having to teach a Capricorn. Okay, or Capricornic um, um, personality traits, right? Someone who would be considered serious, very mature, a little bit cold, um, but extremely knowledgeable and uh, at arm's length. Okay, so anything like that might be happening this week in terms of those themes. Here with the orphaned card, I think there is a great deal of letting go this week for the majority of zodiac signs. I mean, I'm almost through the entire zodiac here, and this is not the first time this jumped in uh, the cards this week. So I think that there's a great deal of letting go, and what a beautiful time to do it in the first week of the summer solstice. Um, we can let go of things that don't work for us anymore, and sometimes it takes a season for us to wrap our heads around it too, right? That we have to be reminded almost externally or by um, you know externalities um, to us bring us to places we wouldn't bring ourselves so if that's the case treat that as a blessing as well uh, but a decision does need to be made around like I said either letting go of the feeling of um, being orphaned 
or literally being in a position to orphan an idea, concept, or even person or persons who no longer belong in this sphere. This is a chance that you will have to take. And I, and I think that the outcome will be very, very positive for you if you remain flexible in this situation. And by that, I just mean give the other person room to speak for him or herself. If this is about another person, certainly if it's about an idea, concept, or a group of people, same thing. Um, I think they deserve to be heard. Perhaps this is a conversation that requires honesty from both sides before a decision is made. And perhaps the decision will be made by the other person or or the ideology or the concept would drop off the face of the earth because it no longer holds water too. Um, but without having, without being in a position to put yourself in, uh, without being able to put yourself in a somewhat difficult position, which requires you to have a somewhat difficult conversation, you're going to be tossing yourself back and forth. And this flexibility around this issue or person is going to feel really old, really fast. So yeah, flexibility is lovely, but if it's a lifestyle around this one person idea or concept, it gets really old and it's really difficult for anyone um, to feel like they're being honest with themselves. And it's the most important thing in the world, right? To treat people with respect and yourself with enough respect in order to be honest and have somewhat difficult conversations. Um, otherwise, I think this will this will keep showing up. I think feeling orphaned or having a sensation of needing to orphan someone or someone else uh, or, or a concept, etc., will keep showing up. Um, this might even feel like a difficult week for you, Sagittarius, or it could feel like there is an overarchingly difficult day this week that you don't normally have to confront. Again, with the corp, uh, Capricornic energy here, um, the card, the artwork, the terms are sort of polar to the imagery, um, but I do think that this is a lesson. This is if you're not feeling blessed, it's going to be really easy to get dragged down. And if you don't let yourself make a decision by being brave enough, to make that calculated decision, I don't think anyone wins here. So uh, it's it's time to be brave, Sagittarius. So with the grouse here, we have the sacred spiral. This is something, like I said, that's going to feel like it's going to go over and over and over until you get to the root of it. It could be an, a long standing, whatever it is, whatever this decision you need to come to the edge about, it could be extremely long standing. It could be a family issue. It could be some about something that you grew up with. It could be a family member, him or herself. Um, we have a couple of jumpers there. I'm looking for one. Um, we've got several more. These are, oh, hold on now. All right. They were just. Flipping and flopping. Let's just get one more card for you here, Sagittarius. Um, yeah, if if you are feeling a little bit even overwhelmed this week, um, most other signs I would say look within, go within. But I think as an effervescent, outward moving, right, planet, planet of expansion sign, I think you might um, uh, you might benefit from hearing from other people. And if that's not in person, maybe that's on the internet or something you read in a, an article or a book, etc. Um, but it, it, you could benefit great more greatly uh, from someone else's opinion or attitude or state of mind or position, what have you. Coming to the edge could just mean opening yourself up to someone else to discuss this. Yeah. A ton there. Holy smokes. All right. We're just looking for one more. Sorry, folks. This was supposed to be under 12 minutes. Um, just looking for one more. I'm going to shuffle three more times. If we don't get one, I'm just going to pull one from the top. Here we go. Here we go. So answered prayer. You could feel as though, and I don't know if this is necessarily a great way to go about it. You could feel as though the other person makes the first move or the, or the concept dies on its own or the other group of people take their leave, etc. 
Um, but I don't think that's the best way to learn from this. I think in terms of what do you need to know, your answered prayer is about taking action here. I think that you are part and parcel of growing from this experience. It's not just for everyone else to learn from, okay? That you're responsible for learning from this experience as well. So have faith in yourself that you can do this as well. And have faith that you can get to the root of this without getting, you know, without sparring with somebody or um, sort of making enemies or, or feeling as though nothing will turn out or that they themselves are not in a similar position. Perhaps this is something that needs to come to a head and uh, everyone would be better off uh, if you were the one to confront it head on. So I hope that this makes sense to you. If you have a moment, please comment below. Let me know how this works out for you or if this makes sense for you. Um, if you're not already, make sure you subscribe. I upload videos for your sign every week. And that concludes your reading, Sagittarius. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.